So then, hello, People welcome back. complain about newspaper articles all the time, but not usually before they're printed. I was beginning to feel scared. This guy, Plantard, could I trust him? Should I meet him or forget the whole business? I didn't have an answer. So I decided to record slightly earlier, so you guys can uh, sort of refresh as we begin the next chapter in Café de la Chandelève. I'd only been in Paris for a week, but already I'd fallen in love with the city. My latest discovery was a little cafe, La Chandelle Verte. I was pretty sure the waitress was taking a shine to me. That old Stobart charm, I guess. It's Plantard. Little did I know my reverie was about to be so rudely interrupted. As I picked myself up, I was really angry. One minute I'm on vacation, the next minute some clown's blown me up. I knew right away what I was gonna do. I was gonna find that clown and bring him to justice. Because justice matters. Justice is up there with liberty, and equality, and uh, fraternity. After all, that's why I'd studied law, wasn't it? Well, that and the money, of course. <laughs> so, this begins the chapter of George Stobald, uh, where we're going to see um, pretty much the remainder of the story um, as George Stobald. Uh, this is where the original game starts, so um, that whole section with Nico Collard at the start was uh, the director's cut, part of the director's cut anyway, so um, without further ado, I think it's... Um, First of all, pick up the newspaper. That will be important very later on. When you have to talk to that fella in the background. The column was devoted exclusively to rumour, gossip and sensationalism. <laughs> Let's look at this the one. leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. And obviously this one on the right is well, Pierre Cochon. The big story was about the brutal murder of a French media magnet shot down in cold blood the guy oozed confidence, like and a regular French statesman. Salah Eddin at the bottom, which is quite really interesting considering Saladin is... It's a different way of saying Saladin, but hey ho. I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah Eddin, 1345. Salah Eddin, Saladin is in the, uh, the Islamic ruler. Died way before that date. <laughs> I don't know what that's in reference to. <laughs> anyway, I think it's a horse. Um, so let's go into the uh, actual cafe shop. Right, let's actually have a look at Plantard to start with, see if we can find anything from him. The sight of the dead guy's staring eyes turned my knees to jelly. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. Okay, let's um, have a look at the mirror. I hope the fact that the mirror was already broken meant I'd escape the bad luck. <laughs> if you're superstitious. The mirror had smashed into a thousand pieces. Bad luck for someone. Poor guy. He was pretty mashed up. Right. Okay. Let's sell uh, this. A mysteriously undamaged bottle of spirit stood on the bar. I'm not going to drink it. Let's just pick it up. But... I needed a stiff drink, but I hated the taste of brandy. Oh, it's brandy. Yeah. Let's talk to the waitress, see what she knows. Oh, my head. Never again. How much vodka did I drink? Oh, no, don't tell me. What is your name, Shelley? George Stobart, ma'am. 
You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? Um, no. Yes, I am. I studied under Dr. Benton. Who is he? Only one of the most brilliant medical minds on this planet. He taught me everything I know about medicine. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. No. You're not getting any drink if you've been in an explosion, love. Got to be safe. You could be in shock. No alcohol. Okay, you're the doctor. What about the old man? Is he dead? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, mon dieu. I've never seen a real life corpse before. Except for Grandmama. That was different. She was family. Has he gone stiff? I shouldn't <laughs> think so. He's only been dead a few minutes. Do you remember what happened when the clown entered? I remember that horrible tune he played all right. It was like a funeral dirge. I'd never liked accordion music either. Let's ask more about this clown. Did you know the old man? No, monsieur. I never saw him before. Did the clown speak to the old man? No. He just laughed at him. Then he, he grabbed the old man's briefcase and ran out of the door. Right. Did the old man try to stop the clown? Oh, he didn't have a chance. The clown dropped his accordion and ran out of the door. That's it. That's all I can remember. Convenient. Because a second ago you said you didn't remember anything. You wanted somebody to pour a brandy, so... Oh dear. Not going to say anything. Moving on. How did the old man behave? Well, agitated, he kept looking about him at the door, at his watch. As if he was waiting for someone? Oh yes, I suppose so. He was worried about something, that's for sure. If you ask me, he was having an affair. He had that look about him, like a guilty husband. Right, let's ask Did the you briefcase. see what the old man had in his briefcase? No, he didn't open it. <laughs> What did the old man do when the clown snatched his briefcase? Nothing. He just sat there like he was frozen. Right, let's ask about the newspaper. Did this newspaper belong to the old gentleman? I don't know. Someone has scribbled a note on it. It reads, Sala Edin, 1345. Does that mean anything to you? No, monsieur, nothing. Terrific. Stay here, mademoiselle. I'm going to look around for evidence. Clearly, there's nothing in this room, as you get out of it. And, and you're heading this direction, because we're going to be introduced to Sergeant Moo and the Inspector. Freeze! Hold it right there! Whoa, don't shoot! I'm innocent! I'm an American! Can't make up your mind, huh? Eh? I demand to see the American Consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground! Put that thing away, Sergeant Moo. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the café. March. What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. Has it occurred to you that he may be dead, Moo? Oui, monsieur, but I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Nice French accent. Examine Not... the girl and take her statement, if you can. Good attempt, but uh, nice try. Et maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? 
Uh, yeah, I guess so, apart from the bomb blasts. <laughs> Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Yep, we yes, did. Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Um, yes, the clown. Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon. The picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Moo? She'll leave. She confirms the doctor's statement. We? Oui? You did not tell me you are a doctor, monsieur? Uh, no, that's right. I didn't think it was relevant. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. Enjoy your vacation, Dr. Stobart. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Oh, wow. Advice. <laughs> I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. So, oh, I'm going to speak to Nico Collard now, see what she knows. If it lets me, at the moment. Excuse me, mademoiselle? Hi, uh, my name's George Stobart. Oh. An American, by the sound of it. Yep, that's right. On vacation in Paris. <laughs> Some vacation, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out in front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with a hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I'm Nico <laughs> Collard from La Liberté. Uh, what is that, uh, some kind of nightclub? Oh, no, it's a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you could interview me about the bombing. An eyewitness account, minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, <laughs> real-life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. A clown? It's him again. Yeah. Who was the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Plantast. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. <laughs> How did Plantard get your name? Through the newspaper, La Liberté. I'd written an article linking two unsolved murders, one in Italy, the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costume killer. Plantard said he could supply me with more information. Well, somehow the clown must have known about our appointment. Right, let's now ask about um, Rosso. Do you know a police officer called Rosso? Rosso? Our paths have a knack of crossing. Right. Someone's something out. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was deliberate. Um, have you seen Rosso? Someone's something out. And he's inside, attempting to question a witness with his psychic powers. That guy is weird. Yeah. I'm not going to tell him what I'm recording, obviously. Have you met the clown before? It's 
a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Why won't you tell me about the clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. You help me with my story, and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay, uh, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. I'll be on soon, monsieur. Uh, fine, uh, I'll see you soon. Okay, now we've spoken to Nico Collard. That's the first part of uh, the meet their meeting together, so let's... Now down here, if you were going to go this way, um, the next step is to try and find a tool uh, from a manhole cover, um, and you're not going to find it down there, because that's where the manhole um, is. So to save time, I suggest you go back down here and talk to this fella, who uh, has, as you can see down there, a toolbox. Um, so let's try and get it off of him. He's not going to like it, and you're going to have to speak to him. Hey! Stop that! Get away from there! What do you think you're doing? I was admiring your toolbox. Oh, we Had a good look, have you? I'm warning you, if you touch it, I'll crack your nut. Okay, I get your point. Hey, you! I thought you'd been arrested. No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, gah, I thought that was it. Those automatics by quite a bunch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old coot. <laughs> Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he says. I could watch it all day. Care beat. I could have knocked this block off. <laughs> Grumpy, mister. Did you recognize the old man? No. Should I have done? Was he a celebrity? No, but I guess he is now. His name was Plantow. Was? He's dead then? Yeah. That's too bad. Now I wish I hadn't called him what I did. If only I could turn back the clock. If only I'd been more tolerant. Well, a bit more the too remorse, melodramatic there. Emotions. They really bring out the hammiest actors in people. <laughs> you can tell that again. What's in the toolbox? What's in the toolbox? As if you didn't know. What's the big deal about tools, anyhow? They're cool. Tools are civilization. You don't say. That's right. Tools are what distinguish us from other animals. Who are you calling an animal? I've met your sword before, looking down your nose at me because I'm working class, huh? I've a good mind to knock your block off. What kind of tools do you keep in your box? Huh? You really <laughs> are interested in tools? Sure, like I said, tools are... Yeah, civilization. So you keep saying. <laughs> so are you going to show them to me? I'm I? why you? Aw, oh, come on. Just a little peek. I've got work to do. Find someone else to bother. Right, let's ask him about the clown. Did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like, in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Ho! Oh, those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. Okay, he's clearly not going to tell us anything about the clown, so... What you then do is you then... Show him the paper, which, as before I said, there was a... Horse at the bottom. Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drip, so I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining.
Bah! Look at this! Damn bleeding out liberals! Cha! Save the dolphins! Catch them and eat them, I say! All that fuss over a bunch of fish! Nah, that's more like it! Look at the size of those! <laughs> like champagne bottle corks, no? Ah, what's this? Saleh Dean running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe! It's a racehorse? A horse? A legend! Bucephalus reborn, mon ami! Like a streak of lightning she is! At which point he then leaves. Do me a favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hole. I'm off to put some money on that nag. What about your toolbox? Stop it. Help yourself. So, very quickly changed his tune. Because of a horse. Interesting, no? Alright, let's raid the toolbox. I found a T-shaped tool in the box. I didn't know what it was, but it looked useful. Okay. So let's head back. And as I said before, go down this little alley here. Don't talk to Sergeant Moo, he's not going to tell you anything important. So head down this lovely little place. The clown had fled into this alley. I was intrigued by Nico and what she could tell me about the explosion. So we're going to talk to Nico Collard later. First, we're going to find some more clues. Uh, whatever you do, don't open this, otherwise a cat will come out of nowhere. There's nothing in that one, so you think, you know, looking for clues, you know, this is what you would do if you were It smelled playing. like someone had dumped a truckload of fish in a locker room on a hot summer afternoon. So, we do open up your old inventory, get your tool, put it in there, go down the hatch. That tool is very useful in this particular I lifted room. the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. You need it quite a lot. So let's go down into the sewer. Now there's a couple of things you need to pick up here. Um, first is on the floor right down here. I think it's a clown's nose. So, oh. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. Yep, uh, head into the next room, off the sewer, and on the floor is a piece of clothing that isn't, I think it's, I think it may be, um, I don't know, grease, I think it's grease paint, and the piece of clothing is here. It was a soggy, crumpled paper tissue. So you need to pick it up. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. And then you need to pick up this as well, which is um, a piece of fabric. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. Um, now we're going to go up to the above section of the ladder. Um, and you're going to meet a hotel. I don't know how to describe them. They're almost like ushers, but butler, I don't know. A mix between that. A concierge? Might be a concierge, I can't remember. Oh, there he is. Hold it right there, you. You swear right? <laughs> I knew you'd come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there, immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. <laughs> ha! You won't catch me with tricks like that. 
Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? A telephone. I need to make an urgent call. There is no telephone here. Uh, I want to know what you were doing in the sewer. Didn't you hear the explosion? <laughs> in the sewer? Uh, a deadly cocktail of combustible gases <laughs> and chemicals, most likely. No, at the cafe. A deadly cocktail of accordion music and villainy, most definitely. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon dieu! That is awful! Did you say accordion music? Yeah, that fiend had no mercy. He was disguised as a clown. By the time the bomb went off, he'd run to the sewer and made his escape. Ah, mon dieu! Then, the man I chased, do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. So what do you do? Oh no, I'm just a tourist. <laughs> Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. Which case, the next logical step is to show him the card that Rosso gave you. I think it's that. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rosso? What does that say? Hominoid divisions? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your, your poise. Oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my oh, God, we could be here for ages. in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector? Now, the reason why you showed the card is because if you hadn't showed the card, it doesn't tell you any of the information that you need to know. So that is why it was important to go for the telephone first and um, ask the question, you know, just because um, you wouldn't have answered the questions you needed to know. So um, let's start with Clown. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. He grabbed me in an arm lock. His face suddenly next to mine. His grip was like Aya, but he did not know what he was up against. Oh no, he made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? <laughs> you, you, you can't suspect her, surely. Just answer the question, please. <laughs> yes, uh, I know her quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe, oh, uh, Six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Really? Dirty old man. So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, mais oui. Who else would I find to cut my toenails? Oh, God, the sight of that. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Right, let's ask about the suitcase then. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? I don't know, but the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Right, now considering we've got some new evidence um, this won't give you much but this will the trousers so you need to obviously talk to him about that does this piece of material mean anything to you ah that is the same cloth as the jacket I found I'd recognize that pattern anywhere 
Go on, it's checking. Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> a pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. <laughs> Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself <laughs> as an ordinary person. No mm. shit, Sherlock. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get huh. the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74980859. You're kidding. Huh. That's his phone number? Yes, that's it. A little trick with number that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. <laughs> well, I have nice to be going. To you. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Vraiment? I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, Inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. So I've been a doctor and an inspector. When he's already a, no a lawyer. So, yeah. Pretty much. So the clown had so. slipped into the sewer, come up into the courtyard, and then slipped back into the street here. Now, it wasn't much, but it was more than the cops had got. Okay, well, I think that's a, a good point to stop this part. See you in the next part. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. <laughs>